Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to an updated mod spotlight on Extra Utilities. Extra Utilities has come a long way since the last time I did a spotlight on this mod, so I really wanted to jump in and show you guys some of the new and really cool stuff that's been added by RW Tema. We've got a bunch of things to check out, so let's go take a look at what's going on with Extra Utilities. Alright guys, one of the first things I want to show you is a nifty trick with water and the liquid transfer pipes. Now remember the liquid nodes are used to transfer liquids from one location to another, and normally you hook them up to tanks or any kind of liquid storage medium. Well now, here's a good trick you can do, you can actually place the liquid transfer node right on top of an infinite water source, and it'll go ahead and start filling itself up with water from that infinite water source. So you can see here that currently the liquid transfer node is holding a bunch of water. And if I go ahead and start transferring some uh, liquid around, we can see here, we can go ahead and put this liquid water anywhere we want. Cool. One of the places we might want to put it in is a drum. Cool. Right now you can see the drum is empty, but ah, it has a small amount of water in it. These drums are really neat. Um, they can hold uh, any type of liquid, basically. Uh, they can hold up to 512 buckets of liquid, which is a lot of liquid to store in one block. However, uh, you should know that there are some downsides to using uh, these drums. Uh, first off, you can only uh, connect them to the uh, top and bottom of them. You can't connect them to the sides. And they're also somewhat expensive. You can see um, the drum here costs about uh, six steel and a cauldron and a weighted pressure plate or two uh, so pretty decent amount of liquid storage but also pretty expensive recipe uh, they won't ever auto eject um, and and you know they're they're pretty nifty you can't also tell exactly how much is in there you can see about how much like it says right now it's about a quarter full it's under a quarter full it's about a quarter full etc etc so it's not a very exact measurement of liquid so if you're looking for a, a clear understanding of how much liquid is actually in there you're probably going to want to use a different type of liquid storage but the good news is you can actually shift right click with a wrench and pick that drum up and you can see how much water is in there then pretty cool and you can carry it around and move it to a different location so the drums are a great way to transfer liquid around the world using extra utilities and while we're on the topic of pipes let's take a look at rationing pipes they're pretty nifty uh, basically what these guys do uh, they're pretty simple pipes but they will only insert a maximum of one stack of any item into an inventory so what does that mean let's get some inventories here and uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw a couple stacks of cobblestone into this chest there we go cool um, so you can see here it's kind of filling up the chest with cobblestone here doing a pretty good job let's go ahead and speed this up with one of the speed upgrades that are available there we go much better oh look we've only got a stack of 64 cobblestone in this chest this one is filling up to 64 as well and then over to this one so you can see here that it's only going to keep one stack of any particular type of item in the chest it's great for rationing out your supplies and having you know certain items in certain chests so the rationing pipe is a pretty nifty addition to the piping system of extra utilities just keep in mind that once you've got one stack of each thing in each inventory connected to the pipes, you're going to uh, have nowhere for this uh, co extra cobblestone to go. So it might not be a bad idea to have an extra piping set up, just a normal pipe, to dump all your excess cobblestone that you can find in that last chest. Now, if you'd like, you can check out some in-game help. It's uh, all NEI integration. If you hit the U key on your keyboard, uh, most items have um, some details about them uh, that are part of Extra Utilities that'll show you um, pretty much what the block is all about. For example, if we take a look at compressed cobblestone, you'll see there's an Extra Utilities info tab here that gives you information about it. You can also, just like normal, see what it's used for. So you can go ahead and look at the Angel block to see some details about what it does, the block update detector, which we've seen in the past, and then there's the advanced block update detector which I think I'll get to now and show you guys is pretty nifty um, it's an updated version of the bud switch that we can see that's built in right here but instead of it just detecting any change in a block ID uh, it'll also check uh, metadata or tile entity data or pretty much anything that you can detect nearby so what could we use this for well let's go ahead and place this right here with some redstone Cool. Note that as soon as I placed redstone down nearby, it did detect a block update. I'm also going to place a furnace here. Up, oh, another block update, because a block was placed nearby, right? Anytime a block goes down, that's a normal block update. But the furnace, what if we were to put some cobblestone in there? Oh, did you see the block, the block update? So even though it's not a block that was placed, there was an update to um, the machine. Now, if I were to go ahead and put a stick in there, let's see, let's put a few sticks in, five of them ought to do. Note that, uh, you know, it's emitting a redstone signal now. Pretty cool. 
Now finally we'll see here that once the uh, fire burns out, the block update detector, the advanced version of it that is, will uh, automatically shut off. So it should detect when the machine's no longer running. So it's just a nifty redstone signal that can detect all kinds of things about tile entities. Definitely play with it with a bunch of different machines and you'll find a lot of good uses. Alright, now back to the pipes. Let's take a look at the fact that now they are considered multi-parts. That's right, the uh, Chicken Bones multi-part API has been implemented with the pipes, so there's a lot of good things you can do with it. First off, you can cover up your pipes, so that it's nice and easy to see the distinction there. Um, we can also take a look at the fact that you can block two pipes from connecting by putting a multi-part between them, which is some really nice functionality. It allows you to get a lot more in depth with where you place your pipes. And of course, you can also use um, uh, the cover pipes here if you want to have um, you know, a, a cover in between two pipes, but not block them off. It's also a good thing to use if you wanna kind of hide your connection here with the chest. So let's see if I can get there. Nice, cool. So you can see everything connects properly, but it still allows the pipe to connect in between. Very good, right? So yeah, it's a nice way to, uh, you know, block things off and do whatever you want. See, there I'm preventing the pipe from connecting to the chest. Cool. Now, of course, we remember the filter pipe from the last spotlight of this mod, and you should know that filter pipes allow you to filter items so they can only go in certain directions. Well, now filter pipes support liquids as well as items. Let's take a look. So simply, first off, let's get some liquid traversing down this pipe. I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up to uh, the infinite water source that I created earlier, like so. Uh, but before I connect that up to the infinite water source, I wanna make sure everything's in place. So. Previously, you were only able to filter uh, items, right? So if I wanted to, for example, filter a water bucket, I could, but filtering water itself, not quite so easy. Uh, but now you can by just uh, double clicking it, but I think you have to use the item filter item right here. So if you double click this, you'll see that it actually turns into water, which is separate from a water bucket. So single click water, another click uh, water source, right? So you can click and alternate them. So you do need to use uh, filters for this, but you can see right here, it's telling you that it's filtering water. Nice. And if we put this in the green slot here, and then we were to go ahead and connect some pipes over to here and get a tank. Let's see what happens when we connect these pipes. So all the water should start getting shot out and find its way down this path into the drum. Cool. And even though the drum is now full of water, it's still not sending that water down this path. It will not send the water down there because it's got that preferred route of going down this way. Cool. Very nice. Now um, you can also do a nifty little trick. Let's take a look. If I wanted to do, say, the opposite, so I've got this item filter, it's set up to filter water, but I want to make sure water never comes down this path. Anything else can, uh, just not water. Well, that's not a problem. Simply take your item filter and place it in the crafting table with a redstone torch, and you get an inverted item filter. What this does is it's kind of the opposite. It says anything but water can go down. So the yellow path is the one we want to go down. I'm going to go ahead and place the inverted water filter down there, and we'll connect our pipes again, and you'll see once again, water is prevented from going down into this tank. Now, of course, if I remove this item filter that's inverted, it should start allowing water to go in there momentarily. Yep, there it goes, nice. Do keep in mind too that if you want to clear it or uh, reset it back to a normal non-inverted, you can go ahead and just place it in there with another redstone torch and you'll get your item filter that's not inverted once again. Now you guys have of course made cobble gens before, correct? Now remember when I showed you that liquid nodes could go ahead and automatically transfer liquid? Well, if you set up a cobble gen, you should be able to collect yourself quite a bit of cobble using this transfer node. Awesome. So you can use item transfer nodes to work as cobble gens in much the same way that you can use liquid transfer nodes to create lots and lots of water for yourself. All right, guys, you know I'm not really good with this kind of stuff, but I do have to show it to you. We've got a bunch of new decorative stones available for you. You've got gravel bricks, which are just simply four gravel and a brick type recipe. And it looks pretty nice. And a lot of these have connected textures, so you definitely want to check them out. So you can see here, like this stuff, for example, which is called border stone, looks really nice, uh, especially when you use it to create a border around something. And a lot of these um, break very easily, so it's really easy to get it back. Just, you know, usually like one tick with any kind of uh, a decent pick or something like that. So pretty nice looking stone. Uh, we've also got this stuff, burnt quartz. 
which looks really fancy and dark and cool. Uh, burn quartz, again, just a block of quartz and you smelt it. Not bad. And then uh, edge stone, which is similar to that border stone, but uh, it's again, looks really pretty cool. Let's get this out of here. Nice. So uh, that's kind of got like the uh, brick type effect, but it's got this nice little edge going right around it. Very cool, edged stone bricks. Hey, that makes sense. Um, we've got ender infused obsidian, which is basically exactly like it sounds and looks very cool. And then we've got frosted stone. Ooh, nice looking. So again, all connected textures, all really nice. And uh, yeah, pretty good stuff. Now there's one more type of brick that I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and craft it because you need to see how hard it is to get done. It's gonna require nine unstable ingots. We remember this process, right? These things explode if we don't get to them quick enough. Come on, nine of these guys, you're killing me. This is gonna be next to impossible to craft. And with a second to spare, boom, got it, unstable ingot. Nice. Uh, this is actually pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna come over here and try it on this. Oh, hello there, how's it going? <laughs> That's right, it gives you the ability to see through whatever block you place it on. Nice. Um, I've gone ahead and crafted a few of them. I wonder, can I see all the way? Whoa, that's trippy. Yeah, that's really cool. Look at that. Ever wanted an x-ray block? Yeah, you've got one now. They're not easy to get, but that is really cool. I mean, you can't really see, like, too good, especially when you get too far down there, but wow, that's really cool. And hey, once you make them, they're not too hard, right? Very nice. So I could probably see some uh, interesting uses for this, even around my base or something like that, you know? Put it up around and just be able to like look through it and stuff. I wonder if I can get micro block version of these. Why, yes, it would appear that I can. Aw, oh, but they don't have the see-through effect. That's unfortunate. And if you are concerned that the um, opaque blocks got all the attention, don't worry. There's definitely some really nice connected textures for glass. So we've got some basic glass blocks here. We've got edged glass, which looks really nice. Ooh, that's cool. Uh, glass bricks, awesome. And carved glass. Oh boy, creeper faces. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, golden edged glass, just for that fancy touch. And then, of course, there's a, actually even a few more, five more of these things. This is cool. Obsidian glass. All connected textures, of course. Swirling glass, which I like. I think that looks really cool. Glowstone glass, which I'm pretty sure emits light. Oh, yeah, look at that. Decent amount of it, too. Cool. Um, and then we've, of course, got the heart glass for all those out there who love pink. And square glass. Nice. And just in case you are wondering, if you're using uh, micro parts here, you'll be happy to see that covers also have connected textures. I think it's covers and slabs. Some of them do, some of them don't, but it's definitely pretty nice to have uh, connected textures on covers like that. So you can cover up your pipes, but still have really fancy connected textures. Awesome. Now, two very useful storage blocks are the filing cabinets. First off, let's take a look at this guy. Um, if we take a look at the uh, information here, the extra utilities info, we'll see that it's basically a storage unit for items that do not stack. Um, but all the items inside this uh, filing uh, cabinet need to have the same item ID. So what's a good example? Um, maybe different picks, right? So if you have a bunch of different pickaxes, um, all the same type but all different damage values. So if I put one pick in there, I can put as many other picks as I want, but I can't put anything else in there. Nothing else will fit, all right? Only picks. But don't worry if the pick happens to have a little bit of a damage difference, not a problem. It can go in there just fine. Uh, this also works for records, by the way. Uh, let's see. Um, so for example, uh, music discs can go in here. Also, you can go ahead and put uh, different types of copper in here. So if it has the same or dictionary type, so if we were to put like, um, let's say, um, copper, copper, so any other types of copper blocks here, that's good enough for now. We should see that they should both fit just the same because even though they're different items and different item IDs, they are the same or dictionary type. So pretty cool. Not bad at all. But remember, only those items can fit in this filing cabinet, nothing else can at the moment. 
neat, right? Then you've got the advanced filing cabinet. Now, if we took a look at the advanced filing cabinet, we'll see this information. Um, it's basically for items that do not stack. Um, the advanced filing cabinet holds up to 540 items and will accept items regardless of the type. Um, and it keeps them alphabetically sorted with the interface for handy retrieval. So good use um, for the advanced filing cabinet is pretty much anything provided that it's an item that doesn't stack. So you can see here that my broadsword and my drill don't stack, but cobblestone stacks and so does dirt and torches and wrenches stack, so they can't fit in there. So any item that uh, can stack will not be allowed to fit inside the filing cabinet, but anything that doesn't stack can. So the advanced one can store all kinds of different stuff. It's not limited to one item idea like the basic filing cabinet. So it's pretty useful for stuff that, um, you know, like I said, um, doesn't stack and it can hold five 140 items. If you've ever wanted to farm ender pearls, go ahead and just plant some ender lily seeds. Now, on one hand, they're really hard to find. I think you can only find them in dungeon chests and a couple other rare places. However, uh, once you do get them, they take a long time to grow. Uh, you can see here that it can slowly over the course of a week. Now that's in-game time, so it takes seven in-game days to go ahead and produce an ender pearl. Um, but they definitely, as they get older, start to produce thorns that hurt you if you walk by. But here's a tip, go ahead and plant this on end stone and it'll grow significantly faster. Still probably take a couple in-game days, but it's still going to take um, uh, a good toll to get made, but you'll appreciate it. Now, uh, the other thing is that occasionally, with a very small chance, if it's planted on endstone, you might get an extra ender lily seed when you harvest these guys. So that would be a really nice way to get more of them. Now let's take a quick look at our transfer nodes again, because there's a couple upgrades I'd like to show you guys. Let's see what happens with these guys. All right, so first off, we've got the mining upgrade. This is specific to this one over here. Remember how fast it was pulling cobblestone out? Well, if we go ahead and throw some uh, mining upgrades in there, we'll see it's actually pulling much faster. So if you want to get cobblestone that much faster, go ahead and throw some mining upgrades in there. It'll speed the process up for you. Um, over here, we can throw the stacks upgrade in. And instead of pulling uh, a single item at a time out, we can go ahead and throw stacks in there and it'll pull the entire stack of items out at a time instead of uh, just one item out at a time. Pretty nice, right? Cool. And finally, you've got the creative upgrade, which is creative mode only. Of course, you can only cheat this in using NEI or creative mode, but it'll basically act just like the transfer node without emptying the internal buffer. So if you've got a stack of cobblestone in there, it's going to go ahead and always place cobblestone in your chest for you without actually using up the cobblestone that's in that internal buffer cool right so if you want to have a nice creative supply of items for your adventure maps or something like that very useful tool here now if you'd like clear understanding of how your items are traveling around in your pipes go ahead and grab yourself a portable scanner this nifty little gadget right here will show you items traveling through the pipes simply uh, take a look you can see there's cobblestone in there and it's trying to find a way towards where it wants to go uh, let's see where it's going uh, let's actually take this cobblestone out. We'll get rid of this creative mode upgrade just to make things nice and easy. And we'll throw a bunch of cobblestone in here. There it goes. So we should be, if we hold our portable scanner in our hand, able to see um, all the items traveling down the line. So we know it's always going to make its way down to the very end here because I showed you earlier these pipes um, go ahead and uh, only allow one stack at a time. But if I take this cobblestone out, hopefully I'm quick enough. I wasn't take the cobblestone out, we should start to see it filling up that chest. So we know the red particles are going into that chest. That's where the items are in the line. Of course, if we add some speed upgrades here, we're going to see it moving even faster. See? Much faster. Cool, right? So that portable scanner allows you to see everything you would need to see. And don't forget, guys, you can use these transfer pipes here to transfer energy as well as liquids and items all along the same pipes. Of course, I'm hoping you remember that, right? But there's an upgrade that's available now that I want to make sure you're aware of. Let's first start transferring some energy using this biogas engine and make sure everything's working the way we'd normally expect it to. There we go. Energy's going in and it's getting transferred down here. Perfect. I like the sound of that. Cool. However, I'm going to break this guy and go ahead and grab another one of those transfer nodes. and place it right here and connect it to power. That's right, we've got Ender Transmitter uh, to transmit all your Ender stuff. Cool. Uh, we can go ahead and send energy from one location to another. So we've got uh, the transmitter and the receptor. That's what we want. We're gonna send the transmitter down here and we're gonna just place it right in. But before we do that, we're gonna right click on it 
and make sure it's set to private or public. Then we're going to go ahead and put it in here with a general public frequency. However, before you go ahead and do this, you're going to want to go visit an anvil and go ahead and place the item in there and give it a name. So I'm going to call it whatever I want, frequency one. Oh, I need to have some levels. There we go. You can name it whatever you want, but just keep in mind that uh, whatever you name it is important because only um, you know the two ender frequencies that uh, match will work together. So I've got these guys that are set up to frequency one. Doesn't matter, I could have called it direwolf, I could have called it whatever I wanted. I'm gonna put the uh, public spectrum transmitter over here. I'm gonna put the receiver over here. And because they've got the same, oh, there we go. Nice, look at that, it's sending its energy across. Beautiful, only because they've got the same name. Very good. Now I wonder if unnamed will work. Let's find out. Yeah, it looks like it does. Very cool, but you can name it in the anvil if you want to, to differentiate some. Very good. And finally, I want to show you guys the portal to the deep dark. This is actually a pretty dangerous place to go. It requires some triple compressed cobblestone, so you're going to need quite a lot of cobble. You're also going to need some quadruple compressed cobblestone, holy cow, and four unstable ingots, and this will give you the portal to the deep dark. This place is pretty scary. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you're well equipped before you go there because dangerous and scary things can happen as you go in. Just place the portal on the ground and right click it and it'll generate the terrain for you. Once you're in the deep dark, oh hello there, how's it going? You might need to dig your way out because sometimes you get placed a little bit down on the ground underneath. Let's find our way to the surface. Oh, looks like in this case I actually had to drop down. Now be careful though, you want to be real careful because the deep dark, whoa, is a very scary place. First off, if you spend any serious amount of time in the dark, you will definitely start to take damage and you won't appreciate it. Oh, there we go, damage, just from being in the dark. Yeah, scary. The darkness is alive and will eat you. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Need to run away now. Yes, the deep dark, nobody likes it. Um, so watch out for that place. But the good news is that any vanilla ores, like iron and gold and diamond and that stuff, spawn at double the rate in this dimension. Um, normal uh, non-vanilla uh, ores like copper and tin, well, those don't spawn quite as uh, you know high. They're still normal spawn rate, but they do spawn. So it's really kind of a nice place to go mining. You just want to watch out. There's a lot of enemies that can spawn here. Trust me, you'll start encountering a ton. Uh, I think I'm in creative mode, or uh, you know, peaceful mode at the moment, so that's why you're not seeing any. But trust me, lots of enemies do start showing up and like i said any significant amount of time spent in the dark will start to hurt and with that guys i think we're ready to wrap up the spotlight on extra utilities lots of cool gadgets added since the last mod spotlight and i think he's got a lot more planned too this is still only version 0.3.5 so it's not even a full release yet and there's tons of useful stuff if you haven't checked out my previous mod spotlight on it i definitely recommend you do because there's a lot of things worth in, uh, checking out that you haven't yet seen all right guys this is direwolf 20 signing off take it easy